Hey everybody, welcome back to the Overwatch channel on YouTube. Uh, sorry I haven't updated in a while. I've been trying to figure out what to do with my channel and where to go from here. I think I want to revamp things, maybe improve things a little bit. I can't believe that I've passed 1,000 subscribers. Uh, <laughs> thank you for watching and subscribing. It's incredible. I can't believe that's happened. Um, I think uh, one YouTuber, White Rabbit, because he mentioned me on his channel, he had a lot of subscribers, and I may have started the ball rolling from there. And uh, although I have changed my opinion of many things, <clears throat> I've tried to do so in a logical way. If you watch my earlier videos and my later videos, you'll see I have a paradigm shift in the way I'm thinking about reality and things. And this is really like a philosophy channel, I guess you could say, or with some science and uh, just thoughts about why we're here and what it's really all about, what reality is. And I've come to the conclusion, and if you've watched some of my recent uh, videos, I think you picked this up easily, that I've come to the conclusion that um, the uh, atheist and materialistic side view, uh, view of things is uh, wrong and the uh, religious view of things is wrong and we have to come up with some kind of new way of looking at everything. The data and evidence for our reality doesn't really fit with uh, so many of these dogmas that we're given or indoctrinated with. You know, I grew up in a religious family, a uh, Catholic uh, Christian household, so I went through that whole process and Catholic schools and all that stuff. And uh, it's really taken me a long time to sort through everything. I w always had a kind of a nature of questioning things which uh, and investigating things that led to me to my career in law enforcement. I've tried to use a lot of the same logic and reasoning that I did in solving uh, cases uh, to solving the puzzle of, of uh, what's going on in the world. Now, um, I mean, if you're a Christian, I mean, really... The simplest thing you could start asking yourself is which version of this list here of different versions and denominations of Christianity is supposed to be the right one. Uh, they can't all be right, right? Um, but this isn't really about Christians or anything like that, this video today. It's really about just reality and reason. Um, and that, in general, everybody really deep down inside knows materialism is wrong. Um, I personally know it's wrong because of my own personal experiences in life. I've had things that defy materialism happen to me. Uh, I've told you on earlier videos, I'll give you a quick recap. When I was young boy, I was helping my dad dig, four, uh, dig uh, four foundation points in the ground in our backyard in uh, the northeast of the United States where I used to live. Um, it was kind of a chilly uh, f uh, night, fall night it was getting dark out it wasn't quite dark it was still dusk we had been working all day to put up this uh, shed and combination that was going to be like a little play fort for me to play in and as I'm digging one of the holes <clears throat> I became aware of what was in the ground or what was in this clump of dirt uh, that it was an arrowhead uh, an Indian uh, or Native American arrowhead and uh, I knew uh, what it was, sort of knew what it looked like. I think I did know what it looked like in my mind, but I couldn't see it with my senses. And that was the first time I really encountered something like that. And maybe you have too, and maybe you're a materialist and you've uh, denied that when that happens to you. How about the simplest uh, thing that we observe a lot is when you're outside in public and you uh, somebody catches your attention but they're not looking at you and you're outside their peripheral view. Uh, you, so you, you look at them or you stare at them and then they turn around and look at you. I mean, these are little things that we know in our daily interactions. We know materialism is wrong. Materialism is bullshit. So is atheism. Problem is that the atheists and the religious have set themselves up a nice little dialectic with each other. Um, and uh, while that's going on, you have all these pseudo-skeptics, an army of them, really, uh, going around um, trying to debunk everything just for the sake of debunking everything without 
I mean, they're, they're clearly, if you look into this stuff deeply enough, they're not skeptics, okay? And I know people always like to pull out that James Randi prize. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Guess what? James Randi prize is, in case you haven't heard, and I'm sick and tired of people mentioning it, is not being offered anymore. It isn't there, okay? They've pulled it. All right, and you can read their reason why they pulled it, but really I think the real reason why they pulled it is because it was slowly being exposed as bullshit that it was. Nobody was going to be able to collect that prize. Uh, he, in interviews, you can carefully listen to what <clears throat> Randy himself said and has been quoted in, and some of the other nonsense, like in his uh, interactions with Rupert uh, Sheldrake, uh, which I will play a clip from you from a Google Tech Talk where uh, Shel Dr. Sheldrake was giving a presentation on uh, consciousness and the human mind. <clears throat> and uh, let me play for that for you now because a student asked him about this stupid Randy Prize and he has an answer for the student. Or the, uh, it, I'm sorry, this is a Google Tech Talk, so he's talking to Google employees here. Okay. Um, ever since Dean came here, uh, earlier this year, I've been telling a lot of people about Psy. Um, and basically, the conversation usually ends as soon as the person I'm speaking with thinks of James Randi. And they yes. kind of put up a James Randi shield where they won't let anything get past. And yes. I was wondering what your response to that is. Well, for the benefit of those who don't know about him, there's a conjurer called James Randi who often appears on TV. And he's a, a very anti... He's, he's one of these ideologically motivated skeptics who believes Psy is impossible. And he's offered a million dollar prize, or says he has. It's, there's a lot of questions to whether he actually has the million dollars or where it is, uh, for any successful test of Psy. And people often say, why don't you apply for the Randy Prize? Well, it's a very good question, and I can tell you my answer. First of all, this man is not a scientist. He has, very, he has no scientific credentials or understanding. In, on his website, it says the prize must be won for people who produce an unequivocal, de unequivocal demonstration of psi abilities that requires no expert analysis. That seems to rule out any statistical experiments. Then he's later said, oh, well, I will accept statistical experiments, but the odds against chance have got to be a million to one to get the million dollar prize. So if the odds against chance are 900,000 to one, you fail the test. Third, you sign over to Randy all publicity rights. You have all legal waivers. Uh, so he has complete control of all publicity arising from this. And fourth, and most important for me, he's a liar. I, he's, a, he's a deceiver by profession, and he's a deceiver by nature. And my reason for saying this, without being sued for libel, is that um, he wrote an article in a magazine about my dog research called Dog World. Probably very few of you read Dog World, but lots of people do. And in this, he said that uh, we at the James Randi Educational Foundation have repeated Sheldrake's experiments. They fail. Then he said, we've also examined all his videotape from his experiments and shown the dog goes to the window all the time. And it's not as he says it is. An unequivocal statement. I emailed him asking him to tell, give me the details of the experiments he'd done. What journal were they published in? Where's the data? Reasonable questions that a scientist would ask. He didn't reply. I emailed again, he didn't reply. So I, e I emailed his scientific advisory board and they advised him to reply. So he then replied and he said, well, uh, actually, uh, these experiments were done many years ago when I looked after a, a friend's dogs for a couple of weeks in New York and I lost all the data. They were lost in a flood, so I've got no data and uh, they've never been written up. So what kind of evidence is that? If I produce evidence for Psy and say, well, I did them years ago, I've lost all the data, but just believe me, he wouldn't go for that, I'm sure. And then uh, the examination of the videotapes, he had to admit he'd never seen the videotapes. He'd simply made that up. Now, with a man with such a low degree of honesty, I don't think he should be an arbiter of scientific credibility or truth. I do believe, however, that real skeptics, people with proper skeptic scientific training and, and who have a track record of honesty rather than dishonesty, are worth engaging with. And that's why I'm doing joint experiments with Professor Chris French right now. Yeah, you see, um, thank goodness this Randy Prize isn't being offered anymore because uh, he was either going to have to pay up eventually or he was going to be exposed for what it really was. 
Another thing is uh, material. Okay, uh, I understand that you know the psychological thing going on here. I mean, people want to believe when they believe something, they want to cling to that belief. Uh, it's very hard for people to shift unless you have that mindset that you want to challenge whatever you believe in. So that is genuinely being skeptical. I think I, uh, looking back on everything, I was genuinely skeptical. I was honestly trying to be skeptical about what I believed in, not what people were telling me, but what I was believing. And that led me to my current position. Um, and um, if you listen to carefully what Dean Radin and this other Google Tech Talk is talking about, he was going through all these experiments and I'll link to all these videos and all the links I'm showing you on the screen in the description section below so you can watch all this stuff for yourself. But in this particular clip, he's going over skeptical replication of experiments that show, uh, you know, but basically the, the end point of these experiments isn't that they prove uh, uh, isn't, isn't what they prove about the supernatural, which really, <clears throat> I think that's a miss, uh, isn't named correctly. I don't think there is a supernatural per se, because I think that it's natural. The higher planes of dimension or whatever it is that our consciousness is really connected to and whatever, wherever we actually go after we, our body dies, our consciousness continues on, that is a natural thing. It's not supernatural. It may be supernatural to our current perspective, but it's not really supernatural. Um, it is just beyond our ability to perceive easily. Um, and the materialist, I think, is just worried about falling into some kind of religious trap. And so they, they, then they go about um, basically denying uh, the, the scientific evidence that shows that you know, something's going on that they, doesn't fit their model. But in this case here, skeptics have replicated uh, experiments, and in this particular uh, part of his presentation, you'll see uh, how far they're willing to go to erase the results. Their own problems. What happens when skeptical researchers try the same experiment? 2005, this very interesting article was published in The Humanistic Psychologist by two skeptical uh, psychologists who did eight Gansfeld studies of the type that I've just described. And after eight studies, we had an overall statistically significant hit rate of 32%, which turns out to be exactly the same overall hit rate that you find in the meta-analyses. They then said that, well, this was precariously close to demonstrating that humans do have psychic powers. So they ran one more experiment using an ad hoc model of how they think psychic stuff would work, which no one had previously tested, and they got a significantly negative result in that one study. So they concluded that due to this last data set, we do not believe that humans possess telepathic powers. Further, the approximately 32% correct figure obtained in an enormous number of size studies remains perplexing. Perhaps this 7% phenomenon is comparable to Meal's crud factor. So I wrote a letter to the editor saying, well, I'm not sure that crud factor is actually a very good explanation. But what it does do is, again, show a very clear indicator of the kind of taboo that we're dealing with. Because if you come into this as a skeptic, you run eight studies, you get an overall significant result, which is the same as everyone else has been reporting, and then you're compelled to say, that, well, this is precariously close to demonstrating something I don't believe. Well, why do people do that? I would have stopped after eight studies and said, well, looks pretty good to me, but some people are not willing to do that. You see, sometimes I'll hear a YouTuber uh, when they're trying to push out... Uh, evidence of something that skeptics or atheists don't believe in or materialists want to reject and they'll they'll still make that plea uh you know uh, uh, for the closed-minded to take another look to think if they're closed-minded they're what's the point of playing to them think they're closed-minded by definition they can't think outside whatever closed mind they have right so it's kind of ridiculous matter of fact i'm kind of sick and tired of people trying to appease assholes basically um, anyone that looks at data and evidence and cherry picks and chooses what they want what they don't want so they can fit their puzzle of things ends up eventually becoming an asshole if they start you know <laughs> doing debates or presentations or writing books and trying to push that agenda while denying other evidence um, there's 
here's a um, abstract report from um, it's published on the U.S. National Library of Medicine and National Institute of Health website. This is uh, a report that shows, I think, over 40 replicated experiments that shows that people are physiologically aware of uh, something uh, one to ten seconds before uh, an event happens. They run all these experiments. If you watch that Dean Radin video, which I'll link to in the description below, he goes over these experiments in detail about how they set up uh, somebody in a room with no input and they have a different person uh, in another room uh, looking at uh, images or... Uh, it, it's it's complicated. It's different versions of the experiment. Basically, uh, your body, your brain and your eye pupils and, you know, uh, blood pressure, that kind of stuff fluctuates uh, before you're shown something at a random event of an image that's disturbing or pleasant, you know. They, 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 the experiment is quite complicated, and I'm not going to go into all the details of it here. I've read this whole thing. A lot of it is in scientist ease, and if you're a real scientist, you can make sense of that, but I'm just going by uh, what I can understand from it. I am not a scientist, but I am more like a philosopher. So, um, and we're all philosophers. I actually, we're all scientists to our limited abilities, you know. So, um, Wikipedia, uh, if you ever noticed, if you're going through Wikipedia, I have noticed, and I found a website that actually deals with this, it seems to me like psychics or skeptics uh, control Wikipedia. Like, no matter where you look, it is clearly tilted to the skeptical side of something. You can't find... Like, remote viewing clearly was used by the government. It's still used by co private companies. There's private uh, uh, people you can hire to do remote viewing. Mediums. Um, if you go to the skeptical website, there's a great um, interview with a researcher that did a lot of work in medium study. And... Um, let me see if I can find it here real quick, because it was fascinating. Because they did, uh, they 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 were um, being cr criticized. They had a controlled, um, was it called double blind study? And um, in this report here, which I'll link to, gives a lot of detail about how they they went beyond double blind to study mediums. They they had proxy sitters and they controlled what information people could know. And uh, the results are fascinating. Um, now, if you're a Christian, you have to believe that mediums are of the devil, of course. Um, <clears throat> and I'll deal with that in some other video. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to... This is more of a video exposing the falseness of materialism. You can watch all these and check all these sites out for yourself. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for all my subscribers out there. I am working on doing something better with my channel. I bought some... Uh, equipment i'm look, testing some new editing software and it's kind of a learning process and while i'm doing that uh, i'll put up some uh, interviews i mean uh, some videos from as soon as i can whenever i find something interesting uh so check out the links and do your own research do your own thinking and uh thanks for watching talk to you later bye